Weather Comp and Open Firm. My name's Alan Hart and today I've got um, David here from Becara and a lot of people ask questions about Open Firm and Weather Comp and David's just going to is just going to chat about Open Firm and Weather Comp and just give you like a, a, a brief overview if you like and then if you um, if you want to know more then if you have some questions below we'll go into much more detail and we'll, maybe we'll do some more videos on it if, if, if that's what you want it depends what you guys want really um, so without further ado I'll pass you over to David uh, thank you for that Alan um, Alan's asked me to do a short uh, resume of uh, control options on our boiler and most boilers of course the boiler can be switched by a standard thermostat just on off thermostat uh, but their options are there for uh, open therm control and weather compensation um, the benefit of operating with uh, open therm or weather compensation is it runs the boiler slightly more efficiently in, in as much as it monitors and um, regulates the boiler flow temperature and the return temperature the condensing boilers operate a little more uh, efficiently the cooler they run. Uh, with an ordinary thermostat, the contacts close, the boiler works up to its maximum temperature, stops, waits, comes back on again. And that maximum temperature would be so hot that the boiler wouldn't condense. When the boiler actually condenses, it becomes a little more efficient. With open thermal weather compensation, there are, there are two methods of adjusting the boiler flow temperature according to the actual demand at the time. If I cover uh, open therm first, open therm is a control protocol. The principle of the control is the control is master of the boiler. The boiler then becomes a simple kettle to make hot water for the heating system. Hot water is controlled by open therm too but the hot water temperature adjustment remains the same. You adjust that on the open therm control. But the open therm control for central heating means you have a thermostat on the wall. It looks very similar, if not identical, to a standard thermostat. But instead of um, a normal thermostat's contacts closing to bring the boiler on and opening, the open therm thermostat makes an assessment of the room temperature that is required by the user. It, adju it adjusts the boiler flow temperature dependent on how far away or how close the room temperature is to the desired temperature. So let's say for example um, the customer wants the heating on at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. If the room was um, eight degrees it'd run it quite hot the boiler quite hot to get the house up to temperature as soon as possible but as soon as the target temperature is being approached by the actual temperature it says to itself okay we're nearly there I don't have to run the boiler at a high temperature I can drop the flow temperature by doing that it's matching the heat loss from the room to the actual demand so it runs the boiler as cool as possible but maintaining the comfort temperature. And it does it without cycling on and off, as far as possible. Uh, there is an efficiency benefit to that, but um, I look at the benefits of open therm in an, with an additional uh, uh, factor. Open therm talks two ways, from, from the control to the boiler, but also the boiler talks back to our open therm control. And what that means is on the room thermostat and on the app, if you've got a mobile device, boiler condition, temperatures, pressure, any alarms are all reported on your app. So if you're in the other side of the world and uh, there's a, you can investigate what's going on in your boiler, if there's any problems, you can deal with it or you can be informed of it wherever you are as long as there's an internet connection. It does much more, but this is a brief summation. So basically open therm, remote control of the boiler um, and makes the boiler slightly more efficient to run. 
with a compensation. It has the same effect as open therm, but it uses the external temperature to adjust the boiler output. If you have a weather compensation uh, system, it would be set up. Uh, we're in Leeds at the moment, where perhaps the worst, uh, lowest temperature you'd expect in Leeds would be about, about five degrees, I would say. Now, it's only five, minus five, sorry. It's only minus five for maybe one or two weeks of the year. Your heating system may be 20 weeks. So actually, you only need the full output of the boiler with the periods of, of uh, extreme demand. So, in a period of minus five, the weather compensation sensor says to the boiler, I need your maximum output temperature. But for most of the heating season, uh, you do not need the maximum temperature from the boiler. So the weather compensation sensor is saying to the boiler, it's not minus five today, it's uh, eight or nine degrees. We still need central heating, we just don't need the high temperature in those radiators that we did when it was minus five. So the temperature of the water leaving the boiler to the radiators is dropped automatically. Customers sometimes query this because we've had 50 years of getting used to very hot radiators every time you turn the heating system on. And they'll say, well, one day my radiator is uh, cooler than the, than the next. Something's wrong with the central heating system. And I was putting in weather comp and you'd put it in for someone and you'd explain it to them and uh, guys who were really technical or ladies who were technical and switched on knew what they were buying and they would say uh, they would ring me up a couple of weeks later i'd say oh everything all right and they'd say david yeah we're warm we're okay but one day my radiator is very hot the next day my radiator is a cooler and today they're just uh warm and i'd say are you cold and they'd go, no. I said, what do you want hot radiators for then? And then the penny would drop. Cooler rads, cooler boiler, condensing boiler, more efficient. Some people say keep the weather compensation, uh, compensating systems running 24 seven. I'm not in agreement with that, but everybody's different. Depends on the structure of your house and the insulated value of your house. Uh, what we have on our little boiler, as well as, well as, as well as weather compensation, is we have what we call a night setback or a setback. So you could operate the boiler on an on-off timer with weather compensation, so it will work when the contacts close at an efficient temperature, and then it will go off when the thermostat opens or when the clock says, I don't need any more heat, the customer doesn't want any heating. But we have a little feature called setback on our boilers, and what that means is when the thermostat opens or when the uh, clocks or the timer says we don't need heat anymore, the boiler doesn't actually stop. The boiler simply drops to maintain a setback temperature. And actually that's in my view and in the view of many uh, trials and tests, that is actually a cheaper way in the long run of operating your heating system rather than having it on, off have it on and then set back. Um, so that's a feature that can be enabled on our boiler. Um, you do have to make an, the installer has to make an assessment of how cold the ambient temperature outside is likely to get in that area and the temperature the boiler flow should be at when the temperature is at its lowest. Generally it's minus two or three to minus five south of Leeds. Obviously minus maybe nine or 10 in Scotland. And you want maximum output when it's at the coldest weather. And if weather compensation is enabled, the boiler, as the external temperature rises, will gradually reduce the flow temperature of the radiators so it maintains a nominal temperature inside of 20 degrees no matter what the temperature is outside but the boiler temperature is aligned to the external temperature so up and down that gradient the boiler is always operating at the lowest possible temperature to meet the internal comfort levels that the customer wants but 
as much as possible it's in a condensing mode which means it's a little bit more efficient than it otherwise would be. Uh, we hope to do a dedicated video if there's a demand for this another time how to set things up. Um, I hope that fleshes out the basics of weather compensation and open therm um, and if there's any questions please uh, post them to Alan and we can answer them in due course. Thank you. Thank you very much David for that um, and thank you to everybody who's watching. If you've got any questions as, as I've said before please ask in the comments below um, and if you want more videos like this if you want more manufacturer style videos again get some comments below um, I'm sure other manufacturers will be watching some of these videos um, so yeah um, yeah thanks for watching